Yo, what's good? DJ Daryl here for another episode of Father of the Fraternity Podcast. Yeah. Got the brothers in here with me today. We're in the barber shop. I'll let um, Jay let y'all know where we at. We're live at 417 Hagler Road. This is Gahanna, Ohio. Different Strokes Barber Studio. This is what we do. It. We um, have fatherhood conversations. Uh, we always like to say this podcast is for fathers by fathers. And we have it in the barbershop because it's the heart of all conversation for, for men. You know, we, we come to the barbershop, we talk, we're allowed to vent, um, obtain resources, have topics, questions of the day, all of that. And we try to bring this into the podcast. So I am, once again, DJ Durrell. I have my brother with me. Norm Strick. What's going on, people? This is Jeremiah. And we have a guest here. <laughs> <laughs> we have a guest in the building, um, well known in the Columbus area. Um, I felt that he would um, not only be great for the podcast, but just good for the people who don't know him just yet. I'll let you introduce yourself. Check, uh, I was about to say check it. <laughs> hey, yo, 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 right. yo, the mic. So it's a man of many hats. All right, right. <laughs> he does a lot of different things, people. So if you don't know, here he is. Uh, uh, what's up, y'all? Um, Track Manifest. Um, Husband, father of two, uh, artist, educator, speaker. Uh, yeah, man. Just, yeah. <laughs> so so um, when we have fathers on the show, we try to ask them, how many kids do you have? I have two boys. Okay. Three and six. Three and six. Yeah. Kingston and Kendrick. What's up? What's up? So that gives people a perspective on where you're going to be coming from when it comes to the topics. They, they can say, like, oh, he's married, two kids. This is where you're coming from. So um, we're going to get into our topic. Once again, shout out to everybody that's been rocking with us. Make sure you subscribe um, on iTunes, or on Spotify, Facebook, YouTube, iHeartRadio. All those things, just search Fatherhood Fraternity, and you'll be able to listen to our, our backlog of shows. So, Jay, yeah. question of the day. So check this out, man. I know we all have been in high school, <clears throat> took home egg, made orange Juliuses and chocolate chip brownies and all of that stuff that you don't really... We ain't have home egg. You ain't have home egg? We nah. had, I wasn't in home egg, but we <laughs> had it. I wasn't that in was it. That was terrible. We had a hot second. That was my first two years in high school. When you they had, got that, it was done. <laughs> you ain't had child development. Health class, we had health like class. Yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. ain't carry around the baby, the sugar I baby. Since grade. Yeah. No, I never. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we all took these bogus classes in high school. Yeah. And as fathers, <clears throat> what would you like to see for the new generation taught in high school that maybe is not taught currently? Uh, I'll start off, and then I'll have Norm, and then Trek. You want to be called Trek or Devin today? Ah, uh, Trek is cool. Okay, cool. <laughs> so um, I think. Financing, finances would be um, a very good topic to speak on. Word. Saving, building credit, um, the importance of it, and just like key terms of financing. Like with me working in finances and I never knew nothing about it before, there's terms that I could basically have learned at 17, 18, like mortgage, <laughs> right. home equity, bankruptcy, yeah. 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 bankruptcy. Right. foreclosure. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, yeah. Credit, interest, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. All, yeah. all these things that I was introduced at, at my job, thankfully, mm-hmm. not due to, you know, signing a contract. Well, I don't know this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Like, Third but, day notice. Yeah. But this is, this is basics <laughs> where um, if high school could teach us these things, we would at least have a foot in the door. Instead of like, you know, it, I think that's just one thing, but I, I'll let y'all bring up on this topic. So I was going to say the same thing, Daryl. Me being in finance as well, working at the bank, um, self-teaching myself finances because I saw what my dad went through. Um, you know, I saw uh, what family members went through and I just, I learned from experience, but at the same time, I kind of watched them too. So I'm not perfect. I'm not like, you know, 800 credit score. I'm doing great. I'm doing good, but it could be better. But high school and at home, finances should be something that should have been taught. Like that's something that is a hot topic. It's something that we need to thrive in this country and to be successful. You gotta know about credit. You gotta know about um, how to save. You gotta know about, um, like you said, mortgages, interest, all these different topics that simple stuff. Um, And it's something that I've been thinking about for a long time and I don't know really how to get into it But I would love to have like an after-school program for high school students or that's a big goal of mine is to to do something like that or maybe like a a class for 
you know, one day a, a semester for his seniors or yep. juniors. That's something I, I have a goal of, but I, I don't really know how to get into that as far as like teaching. I don't know if I need a teacher's degree or what, but I you may be. Do, the, you can do stuff at the library and, yeah. and rent a room and have a curriculum and say, hey, bring your kids so we can all teach each other about this. Yeah. I mean, you gotta, you have to probably make clearance with your job. Right, right, yeah, definitely but, for Because yeah. I, I know I can't do it. Yeah. Um, but, you know what I'm saying, like, you have to, all you have to do is really just go to the, the library and just rent a room something. out. Like, let me book this for the right. for the day. Yeah. Bring our people here. We're not charging. Right, right. How right. beneficial would that be if it was taught in school? Oh, like, okay, after, after I take yeah. math, now I got finance, finance classes. Right. Right. And now I, I have and, business. And not like algebra etiquette. or trigonometry. I'm talking about, like, what a waste. Like debit and credit. Right. Hey, <laughs> debit and credit. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's gonna help. Yes, debit and debit credit, and credit. Is, is basic. Simple stuff. Like, but if people don't understand why you have credit and why you are debiting this, right. and what charges the bank gets from these, and why they want you to do debit, and why they want you, or want or you know. can't go, you can go to the to the corner store, and you don't need a minimum by law. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, but the minimum, is, but they tell you that. But you, if you don't know finances, you you can't yeah. you don't can't even equip yourself with the knowledge to. To, to be on the same level as everybody. Right. So just imagine at six or 16, 17, 18, we knew anything about finances, man, how well off we'll be. All I knew is that I wanted it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, know I didn't I know what money. I needed to do. <laughs> yeah. And, and for me, like I said, I learned through experience. I learned from watching what other people did um, and just kind of teach myself. I'm the third. So I got a lot of stuff that was my dad's and my name that I had to fight for years. I'm talking about, I learned how to call, you know, Equifax and TransUnion and say, listen, look at the social, look at the address, it's not mine. Right. You know, get that off my credit. Like, right. you know, little stuff like that is what I had to teach myself. So, Trek, what about you? Say, you? What do you What do you think? Uh, I was, at first I was thinking of finance class, and then I was also thinking, like, back when I was in high school, mm-hmm. and, I mean, I was in, you know, Columbus Public, and so I feel like a diversity type of class or something would be real important and I guess how I'm trying to like I don't know that the best way to describe it but basically basically when I was in high school it was all black people yeah, yeah it was predominantly but then I got to college it's a culture shock we was at Capitol yeah we was at Capitol and it was like a dude was a culture shock for me huge culture shock it's so like a cultural awareness um, something to that extent so like, you learn different like uh, cultures or backgrounds yeah, of what they like I mean, respect like, like a yeah. world culture class right cause you can learn that in in world history but even then they're not most of the teachers at that time were just teaching what was in the book. And it's right. very Eurocentric. Very Highly. Eurocentric. Yeah, yeah. And very false. <laughs> yeah, so it, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah so yeah. something that, that prepares, like, seniors for that. Because ultimately, a lot of those schools, you know what I'm saying, they know they're going to send you things for, like, scholarships and stuff to apply for. But why not prepare the child for when they get to college, like right. this is what you're going to expect, and even then, that can encourage some kids that aren't applying for college. Like, oh, that would be that would be great. Like, <clears throat> just the little stuff that we don't know about the different cultures, um, nationalities, and races, and just like when you see somebody, you have your pre your prejudgments. You have these you things, yeah. but what are they based off of? Are they based off yeah. TV and yeah. media? Like ignorance, a little bit of everything, like. And then can we get some facts behind this? Like, when you see this person, this may be the story that they have. This is the difference between a Korean and and a a Japanese yeah, and, and a Chinese, Chinese yeah. person. Yeah. Like, this is not- this is how many colors an African person can come in. Exactly. Right. There's people in Morocco that look Caucasian. Right. Then yeah. there's people in South Africa that look Caucasian. Right. right. So mm-hmm. are because- they not Africans? Because when I thought of African as a child, I'm you thinking like I see on the movie. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Dark, yeah, black. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's totally not true. Right. There's a lot of stuff that I think that that would be very beneficial that we overlook. Because, one, we're not even taught to care about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that if we learn other cultures, it doesn't mean that we um, love ours less. Mm. Right. That will give us more strength and pride that we're all learning about cultures and I love mine even more right. because I learned about yours and I appreciate yeah. yours like just, just I'm learning about man. other cultures on like Disney Pixar movies right, like yeah. watching Coco <laughs> like I wow. learned about the the Frinda and all this <laughs> hey, other stuff like it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was sweet though yeah, yeah, yeah. it was sweet the way that they yeah. gave us the culture mm-hmm. I get it 
through the movie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not, it's not just Halloween. It's the Day of the Dead, and right. then this is why they do this. Yeah. And that's all. It, that's all I needed. All I needed was a good hour right. and a half to learn about something, and I get it. Why can't we get that in school? Mm-hmm. That was a good answer. <laughs> For me, I never took Boy Scouts, mm-hmm. but I was always interested in the things that they learn. So you know how you in the forest and you see like the moss grows on the north side. It's like a survival. S- survival stuff. Yeah. Learning how to tie knots. Like yeah. I can tie one knot. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's the same knot I tie on my shoes. <laughs> yeah. Same knot I tie on my, <laughs> I tie on my son's too. Right. It's the <laughs> same damn knot. I want to learn how to tie different knots, how to fish, how to do those survival things. Because yeah. when I grew up, it was just me and my mom. And it's like those type of things are things that I was interested in. I want to know how to build a fire with sticks, you know what I'm saying? And so maybe not a whole course in high school, but if we can chop up, instead of me taking PE running around the damn basketball gym, like, yo, show me how to do something useful that I may save a life with. Teach me CPR in class or something like that. Why isn't that necessary? Why can't we all get certified? Why can't we all be certified? That should be mandatory. You can't can't graduate unless you're CPR certified. You know how many people would say, like, because you got to think about kids take care of their parents a lot, too. Mm-hmm. There are some people who have disabled parents Word. that need to know how to take care of them or if they have a seizure, if your little brother or your sister has a seizure, or if your parents work too much. Right. Yep. And then you have to take care of the house. Like, survival Amen. skills. Like, Yeah, that's, in my opinion, that's the first thing I thought of with the question was, like, I would have been interested in learning how to survive in the wilderness. Yeah. What if I'm stuck, stranded, right. anything? I what if it's in a real emergency? Right. Can I survive? I mean, I'm even thinking about just trade stuff. Like, there are some people that we know college isn't for everybody. It's good to go, but it's not for everybody. So if you know, like, hey, I really like building cars with my dad, I would love to do that. Like, auto mechanic, we had it in school. They, you know we had I mean? the career center. Right, the career center. We had all the mechanics. That was like, looked down upon, too. Yeah, I know. It yeah. was. It like was you, like for the people that was dumb. Like, oh, they yeah, dumb. You they ain't about to, yeah. And they're, they, the culture of that needs to change because mm-hmm. these people are necessary. They're not dumb. They're businessmen. Yeah, these are people who are owning school. things no, business. now. Yeah, like, so they're, they're trade owning school, as, business, and finance. Those are the top three for me. But a carpentry, I would love to know how to build stuff or electrician, like stuff like that. Like, And then that way, you build your own business and you work for yourself. You give yourself pride. You give yourself a business instead of working for everybody else's dream. Like that nine to five man, it pays the bills for now, man. But that shit getting real tired. Yeah, I hate to be the conspiracy guy, but I feel like we all know that they're trying to keep us as employees. Oh, they don't want sure. us to be employed. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to keep us at a level. Yeah. And I just want us all to be conscious of that. Yeah. Not That's just sure. in school, but like out of school, on your job. Like they want to keep you at one level. Oh, yeah. You're not supposed to run the company yeah. and start your own bank. Right. You're supposed to work for them. Yeah. You're yeah. supposed to work for our bank. Yeah. That's yeah. what they said that they had schools were made for when the, that curriculum was done it started off to get people into going to the factories yeah. so you're you're sat you're sitting in a line you sit for this many hours you you do this one thing you, you move along together right. all on the schedule is to fit in a environment of a factory that has to change there needs to be free flowing um classes there needs to be less walls there needs to be um uh, yeah. just Meditation high involved. School should look like therapy. Google. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like therapy sessions in high school. Ther- therapy needs to, to be therapy a part of the curriculum. Be, there, definitely. there needs to be a time where you can just sit and breathe. <clears throat> like, let's sit with your thoughts. Like, figure out like, what, what are you thinking today. Like, and you ever notice like older people that can't stop working even when they retire? It's because they're in that rat race. They so used to working all the time. I gotta work. I gotta get up. I gotta do this. Man, sit down and relax and enjoy the rest of your life. Like working, <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. working, working, working. Like. I think that this was good to think about, like, even just even um, above and beyond. Like, we have government classes, but what are we learning in the government classes? Not nothing. How, How much we, I hate government. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, what type of life applications? Like, what about when you, when you vote? How to vote or what to look for. Right, or, yeah, that would um, be great as far as how to way. how to register and when how often you need to register. Zoning, um, yeah. all of those type of yeah. things that we do, know nothing of. Do how we, to look up your city council. Do we person. take our kids to the city hall, city council things like, like we the town you, halls you, and stuff. You, like the importance of going doing the midterms or being a, a councilman or do we even 
Do we even know what a council person okay. does? All I know is what a filibuster is. <laughs> I know what a... Uh, I am a bill. I'm, <laughs> and I'm right. sitting on the top of the Capitol Hill. Like, those, those things don't yeah. really apply to life. It's just like fillers. Mm. And we got graded on it. I don't, I don't know what the years of any wars. And I don't know the importance of how to vote. Like, and that's terrible. That's why they call us stupid Americans. Because they teach us a bunch of stuff that is, is irrelevant, man. It's irrelevant. A lot of life application could, could be really better. But I'm glad that they're changing some things. There are STEM schools now. There's other ways that people are getting educated. That, I mean, there is things that's working. But Shout out to YouTube. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Honest to God. Yeah. Shout out to YouTube. Groveport has a program, too. When I was at uh, Huntington and I was working in Groveport, I went to that school twice. I taught once, and they had, like, a career day. Uh-huh. But the, the problem that I had was they was doing careers based off of the students, like GPAs. So, like, if you had, like, a 1.8, you working at McDonald's. Or if you had a 3.8, you was, like, a lawyer. And for me, I was like, man, that's so, like... It's backwards. Yeah, it's so backwards. I mean, not to say just because you got a 1.8 don't mean you can't be a lawyer or exactly. you're going to be working at McDonald's. That That's so irrelevant. It's kind of like, why don't you allow the kid, hey, choose what you will want to do. Instead of saying, well, you got negative grades or bad grades, you ain't going to be shit, like... And even that's then, such a, when, they, <laughs> when you tell them, oh, you're choosing to be that, well, hmm, hmm. let's right. go in there so you can see where you're screwing up at. Yeah, yeah. You know what you can work on. Exactly, that. exactly. That's <laughs> that's application. Yes, exactly. Like, you know, if you want to do this, you may want to learn this part right. of this. Mm-hmm. And then you might want to learn how to take a speaking class and know how to speak publicly yeah. and yeah. know how to have confidence. And, mm-hmm. and with that, you might need to learn how to tie a tie because when you okay. go to these courtrooms, you're going to have to know how to do this. And let's, let's get you a career passport. And let's figure out what we're going to do exactly. to to take you there. That's right. what that's what junior and senior year should be. Let's figure out what you want to do with your life, and then how to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Like we, I don't, I don't, I don't. My senior year, man, I thought I was going to play basketball my whole life. I'm like, man, I'm just going to hoop. I was cool. going to be a rapper. Do yeah. I mean, and I didn't know my dad didn't go to college. Yeah. My dad didn't go to college. My sister went to UC for one and a half, maybe two years, but. I didn't have that education on this is what we need to do. This is what scholarships. My dad was just like, look, you, get, you need to apply for scholarships. All right, how do I do that, dad? You know, what, what, you that need to go to this school. Class. <laughs> dad, dad, I, don't, I, don't fill out I don't know what school I want to go to, dad. FAFSAs and all that stuff. Oh, because that, that discouraged me enough to not want to fill out stuff. I'm yeah. like, I'm about to do all this. I don't even know how I ended up at Capitol. It was a <laughs> random. I didn't even want to go there. To this day, I'm mad I went that, there. That's crazy. <laughs> Dude, to this day, I, I still... And I don't want to say upset or regret anything, but I, I to this day I wish I would have went to another school. He regrets you, Capital. <laughs> we had a good time though. I met some great people. <laughs> I met some great people. We had a good time, but this sure, you Bill, went to yeah. yeah, he went to Capital. That's our man. That's how I know Noah. Yeah, Dale. Yeah, yeah. His wife Chancel. Marlon went yeah. to Capital. Yeah, I know yeah. Marlon went. Yeah, we was all deep in Capital, running running things. Y'all was the black kids. Oh, Basically. dude, they had to change. Yo. They had to change. One of the buildings we was chilling at, SA, remember? Mm-hmm. That was my building. We used to chill in the lobby. They changed the whole, the whole, um, the inside of the building to like a cafe to the side because we used to be in there all the time, like oh, kicking they us. That's why, yeah, they look at the SA. They got ran about a Bexley, huh? Right, right. <laughs> they gentrified <laughs> uh, a building because we used to be in the lobby chilling in between class. I'm talking about, we was deep. Chilling, chilling. And it was the one building everybody had to walk through to get to the other side. That community would be there, all that. Thing. Yeah, man. It was nuts. Yeah. So, Jay, good job on the question of the day. I yes. think that we could talk about that really. Even just a, a junior, senior year could be a, a topic for a full show. Right. And just a thought, like, do we encourage our kids to college? Do we encourage them to take a year off to explore the world, yeah, figure out what you want? Like, do we do we teach them ownership or do we teach them to be employees? Those things ownership. are all things that we have been – we don't really discuss as much as maybe we should. Right. Uh, we got to rethink stuff. That's what I always say. Like, yeah. rethink everything. Like, yeah. what you're doing, let's rethink it. What are you teaching your kids? Let's rethink it right. so we can make sure that we can figure out the best way to get things done. So – um, once again, Fatherhood Fraternity Podcast. Every other week we do this and we have our topics. Uh, we want to make sure that you all are getting the most of not just our topics, but our guests too. So, um, Trek, you alluded that you are 
a performer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do a little something, something. So, um, <laughs> yeah, two performers, too. A little something, something. There we are. Over the stage, boy. <laughs> he be going, yeah. So, you rap? Yeah, I rap. Um, yeah, I do a lot of rapping. A lot of, <laughs> a lot, a lot of cool, cool. So, just um, tell us, like, what's your most recent projects that you're working on or something that the people can reach out to look for or listen to when they check you out after listening to the show. Yeah, the full show. Definitely, actually, definitely. After you get so, done. <laughs> um, back in May, I dropped a project called This Shall Hold You. Um, mm-hmm. It's been doing pretty cool. Like, it's one of those things where um, I, I got to a point in my life where being a being an educator and being a parent and stuff, I feel like people try to try to put on facades of what they think people want them to be, what they think they should do to get like you know what I'm saying, daps and, right. and respect. You know what I'm saying? And, and for me, it just got to a point where I was just like, you know what? Fuck that! Like my kids know me, my wife knows me. Right, Dude, being like, real, you know man, what I'm saying? Yourself, like, man. And it was just like, all right, I can still go into these schools and. And speak and be like they respect me more for being the person that I actually am. Not that I wasn't a particular quote unquote positive person, but I'm also a positive person that has flaws just like them. Right. right. So it's just like just be me. Like I'm no different than the Kendricks or the Coles and stuff. They still give a little bit of knowledge while still like hey, right. <laughs> you know. So when I dropped that project back in May, it was probably the most reception I ever got, like ever in anything I've ever done. So I recently dropped that, and then actually I just um, did a collaborative uh, project uh, myself, Soup, and my uh, buddy Snow, with uh, three other young artists, uh, Sarab, Dom Deshaun, and Joey H. Uh, we dropped a project called Carried by Six, um, about seven tracks. I mean, it's fire. get your jazz sports on your <laughs> tilts, like it's, it's definitely got that feel to it, so... I call it a bar mitzvah, man. Yeah, it was like yeah. bars on bars. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm, that was like, a bar. Right, like, yeah, that was yeah, a bar. Yeah, that yeah. bar was a bar. Yeah. That bar was a bar. I see what you did. Yeah, yeah, I, see, I, see, I like that. Yeah. I see what you did. But yeah, it's, it's called Carry by Six, the number six. So, you know what I'm saying? Going off the whole thing, it's six of us, and, you know, going to be judged by 12 and carried by six. Right. So, um, basically, like a super group collective that we just dropped. Um, so, that's out right now. What platforms? Um, all the uh, streaming platforms, um, Tidal, iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, um, you can find it on all those. So, so we know you rap. Mm-hmm. So when is the next performance? Or uh, if it hasn't been announced yet, is there going to be some performances yeah, coming up? Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, if this isn't out yet, by then, the, uh, February 28th, we have a show at Ace of Cups. And then also in March, we're going to uh, have a performance at uh, Victory's. Um, when you say we, you mean carried by six? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then also, um, I actually, during the month of March, um, I do a book tour. Basically, I read to kids um, throughout in different schools. So it's free. You know what I'm saying? I'm not charging them out the head. I'm like, I'm like, I ain't that type of speaker. Like, oh, man. Oh, man you, might you, your, you might as well get your money. You might as well get your money. You might as well get your money while you can, dog. You know what I'm saying? I, I kind of like, it, I, I read to my kids all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then I read to my class as well. So it's like, why not, you know what I'm saying, make reading something like to me, I feel like I'm a rapper. I gotta read what I'm writing, right? right? And I'm very descriptive on how I, you know, recite my flows. So why can't I make reading something that's actually fun? Because it is something that, you know, what I'm saying is cool to do, yeah. right? So to me, it's just like you know. So uh, it's called Story Time with Trek, and it's pretty much like the whole month of March, where I'm just going to different schools. People just like, oh, any teacher, you know, what I'm saying that's listening, educator, whoever. Or a parent that's got you know at a daycare. I've gone to daycare in red. Had to wash my hands like twenty times. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, oh yeah, they dirty. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. So you I got found, that going on. I'm saying, I, North Carolina, all the kids dirty. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. The facilities, the facilities oh, no, no. Are dirty. It yeah, is. man. But yeah, I'm gonna start putting another kid in there. Right. I can't wait to break out of the day. Boy. Boy. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, the rapper mode, I got a show the 28th of February, uh, and then victories in mid March with uh, Carry My Six. And then uh, throughout the month of March, track the, I guess, speaker educator, whatever, I got educated. Yeah, uh, story educator. time with track uh, throughout the month of March, so you can hit me up on that. And like I said, I always work within my schedule, so 
to come to whatever school. What's the preferred way for them to reach out to you? Um, you can reach me um, through any of the uh, social sites, um, uh, Instagram, at Trek Manifest, Twitter, at Trek Manifest. Um, can you spell it just for the people who don't? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's, <laughs> Who's not uh, T-R-E-K and then man I fest Okay. So F-E-S-T. And then um, for the emailers and stuff like that, uh, you can go to trekmanifest at gmail.com. Thank so, you, sir. Yep. Welcome. So Welcome. looking forward to everything. When I tell y'all this man performs with Strong. energy, Yes. I love oh, to yeah. see it. Yeah. Uh, can I say this? Because, <laughs> like, I met you before through the barbershop, and you kind of just... You're, I'm not going to say a different person Because I don't know you well enough to say But you're very mild mannered And cool Like he's chilled out Smooth, mellowed out All that and all that yeah. But damn, I seen you on stage I'm going to tell, tell you when I seen you on stage Because the stage wasn't even big oh, He man. blew it up you, We was at the uh, the Rehab Tavern Yeah the Rehab Tavern You was on And I think Soup was like the DJ or something. Uh-huh. And I'm telling you, the stage wasn't bigger, bigger than this coffee table that we on right now. <laughs> and he tore the stage up. Jumped off the stage in the crowd and was so live. And because I'm an MC as well, those are things that I look for is like live performance. Yeah, actual performance. And I thought that you was going to get on and give me the old cool rap daddy. Oh, no, no, no. I thought he was going to rap with his hand in his pocket. <laughs> damn it. He did. Hey, he hey, did. Hey, hey. No, Trey be dancing, yeah. boy. <laughs> He be doing, yeah, yeah. he be performing. Nah, be yeah, nah, performing. That, that's definitely all me. I just, I, I when I'm out, out, I just be real, I'm just real chill. Like, yeah. and it's not that I'm like purposely like, none of that. You know? And I know how it is. Yeah. We in the barbershop, everybody kind of doing their thing, and you don't want to be that one dude that's yeah, standing out. Y'all know I'm right, right, right. right. I just want to hear what everybody talk about when you leave. Hey, the one dude everybody talk about when you leave. You like, yeah. like that. When I seen him on stage, I'm like, that's the shit I'm talking about right now. <laughs> you came alive like, hey, how y'all doing? Anyway, blah. <laughs> you turning the bus to rock. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I come to the barbershop to hear all the hot takes. Yeah. To get yeah. my tape bearing line up. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I like your energy on stage, though, man. Uh, and and I, the I, thing I, I can that. attest to is... Um, when I see you at the festival this summer with my wife, and you had your son on the stage, yeah, and my wife loved it. I knew that. I was like, we're gonna, we have to stop to watch him because I knew. I think it was like maybe Confess or something I like that. Confess, yep. And I knew that the time that we were gonna be there, you were gonna be performing. I'm like, we got it. Whatever we're doing, we're going straight to make I sure he's there that too. Y'all did the and, last words trip, didn't y'all, man? Um, we we didn't do it at that one. Um, I know they did one. Somebody had did something prior. Was to it two by two or something? Two like by that? two. Yeah, two yeah. by two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. confess. I remember you brought your son out, and that was just dope to see because he's there off to the side most of the time when I see you at the mm-hmm. live out, outdoor things. And so the, the funny thing about that, <laughs> so we took an Uber to get there, and the whole time, I thought my wife was just tripping, but she was like, "He thinks he's." <laughs> Cause I was like, all right, well, he's good. So then we get there, and he's like, and um, they didn't want me to get on the stage yet, as far as the mic check. So I was like, you know, whatever. I was like, go up there and do the mic check for me, or whatever. And he's, he's, you told your son, yeah. So uh-huh. he goes up there. Yeah. I mean, not a fear in the world. This is my oldest one, Kingston. Yeah. My my three year old Kendrick. He's just, he's very like observant. He's probably the least of the two I really have to worry about because he does not take any shit from, like, nobody. <laughs> like, he won't shake where my... Come on, Kingston, he's just very extroverted, out there. Right. He's you. you. He's like you. Uh, to an extent. Like, yeah. they, got, they got different halves of me, but, yeah, yeah, probably, like, for the most part. Right. So then I get to the last song, and I'm kind of I'm kind of out of breath because I'm, like, super, super excited or whatever, and it gets to the hook, and I'm just like, you know what? And I see him standing there, I was like, you know what? Just come on, let's go, let's nah, go. Let's go. He, was, he, he, he was deep, like, oh, he, like all right. dope. he grabbed the mic and then it was like, all right, I didn't have to tell him to do nothing. Well, he was just ready. like into it the that's, whole time. That's so. dope, though. And that's memorable to yes. me. I like, like I, 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 I remember that and I know that he ain't forgot about he that. He forgot so. about it all. And that's where it ties into fatherhood. Because we all do other things and we all do things that we love to do. And to be able to incorporate your family with that. Is dope, and I appreciate that, and I'm yeah, glad that you were open and free to be on this show, so we can incorporate it all together. Oh, definitely, yeah. See, because Ava on the turntables is dope too, man. She, <laughs> Ava hey, be trying. She, Ava be, she, she sees me. Man, she sees me about the that's practice. So dope. She like, we about the DJ. Yeah, man. That's. I, I did a birthday party this Saturday. No lie, I'll get my book bag together. 
She like, I gotta get my book bag. So she gets her book bag and starts putting her pajamas. She mm-hmm. puts like some socks and a toy in a book bag. And, really? she, <laughs> and she's just like, we, we about to DJ. She told mommy, she's like, mommy, we about to go DJ. That's she's so like, tight. nah, you stay with me. She's like, nah, <laughs> nah, me and daddy, me and daddy go DJ. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's it. Mommy. <laughs> you know we go, saying? you stay. And that's so tight. Like there's something like that. I want. Like with Braxton, I don't have it. Not necessarily I don't have anything I, I want to do around him, but like. For me, basketball was like that one thing that I used to really love. So coaching mm-hmm. is something I – this past weekend, I was like, man, I want to do something that I actually enjoy. So right now, I'm about to get into probably coaching this summer. And, like, even photography, man, I don't know what it is, but I've been having a real, like, passion for it. And Mark's like, let's just do it. Like, just do it. Mm-hmm. Like, 2019 is no more about what I say I want to do. We're so, just doing it. You just man. finished telling me you want to start skating. Get yeah, man. We're we into it. it. Like, I, there's no <laughs> straight, more straight saying up. what we're going to do, man. Let's get to it. Let's do it. So, man, so that's tight. This is dope. And this is going to go right into our conversation today um, about education. We talked about that in our, our in the early part of the question. And we're going to speak about this, um, and I'll give you all some background of what made me want to speak about it. Um, first off, the Killer Mike, um, with him speaking with DJ Envy, having the conversation about public school versus um, private schools. Man, and that was I serious. wanted to reach through that. <laughs> <laughs> and it, that, that sparked it, and I'm like, man, I wish we was recording today. Right. But I'm sorry, <laughs> I, mean, I, wanted, I wanted to talk. <laughs> and then I had another conversation with a friend of mine um, who discussed about behavior um, of their children in the morning and then that makes me think of maybe how are they acting in school what can we do to equip our kids before they get to class to maybe have them have a better day um, so these things just put together like okay education let me highlight track see if he can talk because you teach I'm you a, educate yeah I'm in a and I actually <laughs> it's funny because I'm I work in special needs so I work with kids third, fourth, and fifth, but, and we'll talk about it, being one of the few uh, brothers in my school, I'm kind of like the Joe Clark where oh, I'm yeah. at, like, so. We need more black men yeah. as teachers, too, right. Mm-hmm. Right. and I just wanted to have that conversation, because it's necessary to rethink these things that are, that we're doing. So, um, first off, um, before we even get into the schooling. Let's start with the private school, um, public school education topic. You have a school age. You have a school age child. My son is sixth grade. My daughter's first grade. Yeah. So I'll start off with you, Jay. When it comes to private school, public school, what are your thoughts? Is there better education, or is there? You know, honestly, I'm uh, I'm different when it comes to that. I hear a lot of people talking about school systems and schools and good schools, charter schools, private schools, all yeah. of that jazz. And I kind of don't leave it up to the school to teach my children. You know, I'll, my kids will come home from school and I'll de-program them. You know what I mean? Right. What did y'all learn? What do you think about that? Does that sound true? Right. You know, y'all did the Christmas play. What do you think about Christmas? Right. What is Christmas? You know what I mean? And I really teach my children how to think right. versus teaching them what to think. Right. That's just always been me because I know how I am as a person and how my mother raised me. She didn't really raise me to just... She didn't teach me a bunch of stuff and make me remember it and then regurgitate it. Right. She kind of th- taught me to teach, to think critically. Right. You know what I mean? Problem solving and those type of things. Right. So, for me, the only thing that I care most about was, are my children safe? I want to have my children in a school that is taking them seriously, that takes themselves seriously. You know what I mean? The teachers are for real about their job. So, I make sure I go down to the teacher parent conferences I do all of those things my wife is on the PTA like we're heavily involved in that's our school important. Yeah. Important. you know what I mean that's very important <laughs> and uh that's kind of the way that I handle school I don't really expect for them to raise my child I honestly don't even expect for them to teach my child I that's they go to school because they have to Right. It sounds crazy, but I'm 100 percent serious. You can always homeschool. I understand too. that, though. You know what I mean? And that's more or less what I we we homeschool. Like I'm teaching my children the things that. Remember when we talked about culture? Yeah. For me, culture is everything. In culture, you gonna get all of those areas, right. and then some math on top of it, some science on top of it. But I want to teach them like who they are as a person and what they need to know. Yeah. We was just talking about uh, vocational schools and, and career centers. 
and how you was looked at as, as, as a fool if you went to a career center. But no, I know exactly who I am in this world. I'm a mechanic. Right. I'm good with my hands. I'm good with math. I know my tools. I know my way around a car. I am a mechanic. I love cars. Right. So to fill my head with a bunch of things that is going to confuse me, now you're teaching me calculus. I'm failing trigonometry. I can't understand algebra. Right. But when I'm working on these cars, I'm using all of those maths. Exactly. Right. One of the best things for me, I didn't even know that I was good at math. Only until I was an adult. I'm very, very good at shooting pool. And now I realize how much geometry I use. Oh, yeah. How much physics I use. It is. It to is the point where when I see geometry being done, right. I'm like, oh, so this angle, is that? that's what that is. So you, uh, that's a bank shot. That tr perfect isosceles triangle. That's a bank shot. I can do not that. Not even thinking about it, though. I don't think about right. it like that. I think about it. Maybe I'm a left that's, brain. That's or, easy or life it application, though. It's yeah. simple for me. And so when I'm teaching my son math, it's easier for me to reference pool. When I'm teaching my son physics at 11, it's easier for me to reference pool. But I can't open up a physics book and we're, not, we're, we're not going there. Right. I'm stupid. I can't even read the big words. It's boring to him. He doesn't understand. Right. But then when we on the pool table and he can actually see the math problem worked out. Because you're learning, man. You that know what I'm saying? Sense. But I feel like we all are. And then once we learn visually, then it's easier to articulate and write down. True. Mm -hmm. I think about MCs when we write rhymes. The process that you go through in your mind is so mathematical. It's yeah. so scientific. But all we know is, I'm trying to think of rhyming words. Yeah. That's how we articulate it. But because I know what MCs think, you catch the rhythm and I heard Jay-Z talk about how he writes rhymes. And it's really like a backwards form, but he'll catch the rhythm first yeah. and then just apply the words and the emotion to those rhythms. But that's like genius level thought. Yeah. That's what <laughs> people do when they write symphonies. You sit there and make your emotions into a rhythm and then you put it down on paper and then put the instruments over it. You can even say that for an athlete, man. You know how much genius, like, genius behind playing basketball and how to know how to split a defense, when to back out, when to make a pass. Slowing your speed yeah. down. Like, that's a genius. Holding man. the ball, watching the clock. Right. And you know it's going to take me six seconds to six. drive in, pass it to this dude right. and him to shoot. That's, that's genius, genius level thought. And that's what I'm saying. I don't really expect for the school to teach my child how to do none of that. I expect for the school to teach my child how to be an employee downtown working for your local bank, your local insurance company. And so I'm kind of trying to teach my child the other side of the game. This so, is how you become an entrepreneur. This so, is how you become a boss. I, I get what you're saying, but for the sake of argument, if your wife was like, we about to get this house, or we can get this house. This house is private, school, um, it's, Come on, it's, it's, this is it's, it's white, or we're over here, and this is culture, but you know that these books may be dilapidated and ain't no laptops. Rough around the head, wow. yeah, rough around but the you, but they gonna get our culture. Breaks. Where, where are you going? If it was your choice, where are we gonna stop? With school, this is gonna sound so ignorant, but I wish that y'all at home could see the seriousness <laughs> of my face. I don't give a damn about none of that stuff. Okay, I'm gonna live where I feel safe and where I know that my family's safe. We live right across the street from Shady Lane Elementary and Sherwood Middle School. It ain't the most dangerous neighborhood in the world, but it is like right off Livingston and Shady Lane. Yeah, kind of you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, a little little big, you get yeah. the best yeah. of both worlds. Right? You might get yeah. chased by a pit bull yeah, a on the bit. way home. Right. You yeah. might see the kids rolling up weed on the way home. But at the same time, we can go to that school every day. The principal knows us. Right. The, the kids know us. The teachers know us. Like, all the way from fifth grade to first grade, all of those teachers know our face. We are instrumental in that school. My daughter knew the teachers before she even started school. My daughter was used to the school before she even started. You know what I'm saying? So by the time my daughter started kindergarten, she was like, hey, she knew the lunch lady, the, every, the librarian. She get treated, treated nice because everybody knows. That was her community school. Right. And that's really what's most important to me. All my children... Are they safe there? Okay. Yeah. Are they able to learn there? Because I may send them across town to a school where they're not accepted. They feel insecure about themselves. Right. Now. You know what I'm saying? Norm, what's your thoughts? So I'm kind of half and half. Because I was saying, I'm thinking about Braxton going to private school up until maybe eighth grade. And then right. public school, senior, <laughs> and all the way up to senior year. Because I feel like we need that. Like, it may balance. not be. Yeah, we need that balance, man. Like, there's no way I want my son to go to private school all his life. And then be culture shot, you know what I mean, versus on people. 
You know what I mean? Like, I want him to be able to go to. So why would you not want him to be in public school first? We're not saying I wouldn't want to. It was a thought I had. Yeah. Like, I would. I thought about like. Not saying you're wrong. I'm just right, right. Just thinking. Um, pretty much what Jay is saying is like it's all about what happens at home. So no matter where they go, I want my kids safe. But at the same time, I want him to be able to learn and explore. Like, if it's going to be a public school, do they have certain curriculum that's going to help him in life? You know what I mean? There are schools right now. Like, I, I don't know if it's a magic school or what, but. Um, monastery schools now to where they're able to walk around in different areas and learn different activities instead of just sitting down at the desk taking notes because that's one thing I hated about school is everything is about just memory and just remembering stuff yep. you know what I mean it has nothing to do with application or what you really learn that's why I hated school it's like man I don't remember none of this stuff like I'm doing it for this project and that's it but by the end of the summer you're dumb again you don't right. know nothing you got but Damn. for us, even thinking about, you know, the whole plan for the next 20, 2020 is for us to be in D.C. They're moving so many people out. I want him closer to the black people. I want him closer to our people. So public school, for me, that's going to be right up our alley. You know what I mean? So number one, it's going to save some money. <laughs> number two, he's going to be around his people. So, I think that, that was kind of the joke with the Fresh Prince is that I'm moving to this cushy, beautiful home. In Bel Air, mm-hmm. but my cousin life. is a right. cornball. My right. cousin is a square. Hillary dumb. Yeah. They have no street smarts whatsoever. And that's why Ashley got everything from wheels. Like, dang, exactly. I like this. <laughs> and Ashley was the baby, and she was intrigued by that. Mm-hmm. But the other two had no sense of of self, no any of that. They yep. was just privileged, rich fools. Yep. And it's like Will was the goofball, but he, he was the this. smart one. He was the one that was yep. thinking. Right. But he knew who he was. He knew his culture. You know, what I mean, he was all about. Self righteousness and blackness and everything. Sorry, he taught no. them that, you know what I mean. So he taught even the parents that mm-hmm. Uncle Phil and Aunt Viv. He gave them like sense of them yeah. Like, this is right, who you where are, you came Uncle from. Phil. Right. This is who. Remember that one where they went back to their old apartment. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that's what I got from the show. Was like, yeah, he's the idiot, but damn, he's the kind of he's the, the the heart and soul of the show. Right. Mm-hmm. Wow. They got the money and all of that, but those is empty characters. Hillary ain't worth a quarter. She don't know <laughs> Carson, you know he's black. He's yeah. like, come on, man. Remember the episode? I would have pulled us over. <laughs> yeah. I, that uh, was the best no. episode. He was, we was like, man, put put your hands on the car, Carson. Why? Yeah, we so, done nothing yeah, wrong. Right. <laughs> Guys, put your Remember hands that? on the car. <laughs> That'll get you killed. No, seriously. That'll get you killed. If, yeah. if you don't know your culture or mm-hmm. what people see you as, it don't matter how what private schools you went to, right. they're going to see you. Yeah, mm-hmm. they don't care. None of that. They don't care you went to, to Capitol. I'd have all. been pulled over multiple times in, in Columbus. I have my Capitol uh, resume right here, too. Like, listen, <laughs> sir, I go to Capitol <laughs> University. <laughs> I, I'm just going to school. I'm going to get my windshield <laughs> fixed. This car. I just, I I have have stop yeah. talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, I got over a couple times, but time you never I know, man. Stuff ready, <laughs> right, yeah. There, right. here you go, sir. Yeah. yeah. So, Trek, what is your thoughts on public versus private? Um... Well, as a parent, yes, I'm kind of where uh, Jay is at. Like, I don't really care. So, like, my kids, they're they're <coughs> in the Canal School District, um, Canal Winchester Schools in Columbus, Ohio, or in Ohio, yep. and they both have <coughs> IEPs. And my thing is, what is that for people that don't know? Um, it's basically um, I can't remember the exact name. It's crazy because I teach in it, but. It's basically like an a, a individual plan for your child. Okay. Um, so there might be some kids that have learning delays, uh, speech delays, behavioral delays. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's Things what they like need that. anyway. And I, <laughs> he's making my point. Like, that's something that I would argue that could go on for a whole other topic. Yes. That every child should have. Yes. Because it, it creates a um, accountability on both sides. Right. As far as the teachers. And a but, safe haven for the kid, too. They don't feel... Like, they're mm-hmm. behind if somebody says something like, oh, man, he's asking another question. Like, he's stupid. Exactly. You know, then you don't want to ask questions no more when you get older. Right. <laughs> and, um, but my thing is, even with that, like, no matter where my child is at, like, I'm, my presence is going to be known yeah. as the parent. So, I, as parents, I have to ask the questions. I have to, if I see the homework that they have, I if I have the questions, I have to ask them. If I don't know about it. I need to be able to have that communication amongst that teacher, whether that's in public schools, whether that's in private schools. Being a teacher in um, public schools, um, they have, while the curriculum 
and things of that nature is basically I mean, called for what it is. It's geared towards testing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The teacher, it's solely to me, it, it, at least in our class, it is solely up to that teacher to create that environment for that child to want to be in that school. Okay. It is not, hell, even in that classroom, like whether it's a public school where, you know, you're going to, you know what I'm saying? Like maybe some of the things within the environment of that school is not the best or if it's a private school where it's overly stimulated and you feel like you're in a mansion. Like no matter what, the teacher has to create that environment for that child to want to learn. Like there's nothing worse than a kid the first week of school. It's all like smiles and hey, blah, blah, blah. And one of the things I hate as an educator, like, hate when we walk around our tell our kids, oh hey, there's my friend. Hey friend, hey friend. When in the back of their mind I hear them in the dad going, see just like that kid's getting on my damn nerves. And it's like, that ain't your friend. I don't tell my friend, hey friend, and right. then talk some shit behind their back. Like, right, right. like, like, it, phony, it, it, like the model of a teacher needs to be the exact same from granted, and I'm not saying like they gotta be on point every single day. Just consistent. Exactly. And and that that needs to be across the board, whether you're in a public school or a private school. So, um, you know what I'm saying? Like there are private schools where the teachers suck. Yeah. But they're just doing just enough to get, you know what I'm saying, their resume together or mm-hmm. get where they want to be. So you you your child there I mean, I've gone to college with kids that went to private school and half of them couldn't even get through. A simple like class where it was like a uh, public address where you're just speaking, right? Like public speaking, like little things like that. So, from a parent perspective, I don't really care. I just need to make sure that my child is getting the best education, and I, as the parent, I'm going to make sure of that. And if it's not done, I'm knocking on the door like, hey, so yeah, why is this happening? So, it's but as an educator. And I say educator a lot because I feel like there's a te- difference between teaching and educating. Yes, I feel is. like with teaching, there's a short term. Educating, you're, te- you're um, doing it for the long term. So, like, you know what I'm saying? For the listeners, like, I can teach you what two plus two equal four, four is. Like, no, because that's what it is. There, done, period. Whereas, if I'm educating you on why two plus two is four, like, hey, so if I put two fingers up with my right hand, two fingers up with my left hand, what does that bring? So that's something to learn for that long haul right, and, right. and things of that nature. So it's like that's a big difference as well because you have some you have some people who are just teaching. Teaching. Whether they're in the public yeah. or the private school. And you have some people that are actually educating whether they're in the public or the private schooling as well. I can remember even being a student in public schooling. Like some of my best teachers came from that were actual educators. Like Seventh grade, Miss Pettis. I don't know if she's still teaching now, but that was my math teacher. And I learned so much from her in seventh grade that I don't think I would have learned from anybody else. And that's in a public school. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, algebra, uh, uh, pre-calculus, 11th grade, Eastmore Academy. Um, one of the best. He made it so simple, like simplified it to the point where it was like, you just got to be stupid. You don't want to be <laughs> right. least. Uh, <laughs> see in this class right. like and that's in public school like they made it to where it was easy for you to learn if you didn't get it all right we'll catch up that's like, the most but, important thing it is because as i get older man i realize how much i appreciate and i love math mm-hmm. and i remember my teacher mr shoot taught geometry in 10th grade and he was telling me like he would always say do the work use the formula yep. you know the formula mm-hmm. like the work really does itself you write the formula down, plug the numbers in, it's done. Do it. Uh, he always write on the on the uh, do it on the chalkboard. Do it. That was his favorite thing to say. <laughs> do, do the it. work, goddamn it. Do the work. Do the formula. Do the it. formula. Do it. But yeah. it's so simple. Like math is one of those things where it's like if you got it, you can do it this way, you can do it that way, double check it, add it, subtract it, it's always gonna equal the same thing. I appreciate math for that reason. But in, in school, my teachers didn't teach me properly. I wasn't learning properly. So math was boring. It was confusing. It was difficult. I was scared to ask questions. All of those things. Really, if I'd have had a teacher that cared enough, consistently enough, man, I'd have been top of my school in math. I'm very good at it now. Man, I, that, makes, school, a, I had that, that makes a difference. Though, yeah. other you know, I was saying, in high school, I had the same math teacher for four years, dog. And she loved me, Miss Bukovic. I'll never forget her, man. She was so cool. She was Italian. 
she was she was wild though. She was just like, "Hey guys, stop running the hallway. Yeah. Hey, well, good morning. How you doing? Yeah. All right, guys, we're gonna get to math." Yep. And it was just crazy <laughs> because I was, I'm good with numbers. Like I can do math in my head. I can do percentages in my head. But for her, I don't know what it was with her. I got a D for three years straight. And this is this is what what hurt me sometimes. This is why I have difficulty with my dad. You know, my dad used to say, "D is for dummy." D is for dummy. <laughs> How you get a D in math? <laughs> I said, God damn, <laughs> I'm getting A's and B's in every other class. <laughs> and this math class, I don't know what it was. It was the teacher. And I remember I took her class twice my senior year. I'm sorry, I took it uh, junior year, senior year. And I got a C plus. And she was crying like, I'm so happy for you. And I don't know what it was, but I wish I would have went to somebody and said, listen, let me get a different teacher, man, because this ain't working. <laughs> like, they don't see stuff like that, man. They should be able to see that curriculum and see what you're doing and ask questions like, hey, is everything going good with this class? Man, are you, know, you understanding? Are you understanding? Yeah, man. I think that what you said about teacher versus educator was very good. I think that will allow us to think about when we take our kids to a new school or considering different schools, when we sit and meet the teachers, figure out who has a passion for educating and who just wants to teach. And then figure out how your kid will gravitate to the right teacher. So I, I yeah, know. wouldn't it be great if the <clears throat> kid could be like, yo, I like that guy. Yeah. I like the way yeah. he teaches. Because right. I felt that way. There were certain teachers I felt like I could learn from and I felt safe with getting a, a, a answer incorrectly with. Yeah. If I don't feel like I can learn from you or I can't be wrong around you, I'm probably not going to get educated because I won't try. Right. I won't attempt. And this is the thing that I was saying about not really tripping on public schools. For somebody that looks like my child, teaching my child, I know my children. If it's a black dude or a black woman, it's no problem. They're going to sit and listen. They're going to have some yep. kind of understanding. Whereas an old white guy teaching my son, he's not going to listen to that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's just that's naturally how it is. Yeah. Not that my children are racist or anything <laughs> like that. But it's they about know. comfort level. I, I can see my grandma, my second grade teacher. I can see her. I had a black second grade teacher. She just reminded me of my grandma, so I loved her. Loved her. And I just wanted to listen to her a little bit more. There was yeah. there was other white teachers that I had. It took a little bit more for them to connect with me, yeah. but I had to feel like they weren't judging me. Even as a young child, I felt judged mm-hmm. prior because I was the black boy in the white school. Yeah. Whenever I went, I was the black boy, and I wasn't. Damn, that's so I was, uncomfortable I wasn't, too. I wasn't Daryl. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was the black boy in the class that was smart. Mm-hmm. Or the black boy who had nice shoes that day. Or, like, it wasn't Daryl who did his work. Right. And that's the thing that I, I struggle with uh, the most when I'm around, like, other, like, educators and stuff like that. Like, we have to, and I'm not, like, slapping wrist or anything like that because we can all, in any form of education, you always want to stay sharp. It's, right. it's really a practice in yeah. a sense. You know what I'm saying? Doctors and lawyers, they practice all the time because there's always something new right. that you're catching on. There's no expert in teaching. There's right. no expert in that. But um, just learning to adapt and adjust to your students. So a lot of our kids come in and we don't know what they have going on at the crib. Oh. We don't know um, if, you know what I'm saying, like they had a long night the night before. Oh, you right. didn't turn that homework in. All right, that's a zero. Like, we don't why Actually, didn't you? Yeah, turn it over? right. Like, what's going on? Like, M- missing meals for breakfast, so they right. might need to pay attention. Or even like adapting like life skills. I mean, I know kids. I there was a. I had a kid. He wasn't my kid, but he was a kid that could, that I mean had the same raggedy shoes, and he was getting picked on about that shit. Like, that shit sucks, and man. I'm a huge like advocate for like. You know what I'm saying? Being an upstander. Like, you know what I'm saying? Not standing by on anything as far as bullying and stuff like that. Like, right. kids know, oh, Mr. Thomas sees that shit. Oh, it's shit. over. Like, it's a wrap. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to get in your face. I don't care. Like, I've even had parents, like, try to come up to me, like, wanting some smoke. And it's like, cool. I'm all for that. Right. Like, your child's not going to pick with this kid. Like, and right. I'm not going to let stuff, like, tolerate. Like, when your child is in this building, whether they're in my classroom or not, they're under my care. Period. Right. So, I'm not, I'm not taking no shit. Like... <laughs> so, but um, but I, I wore the same shoe size, and I just brought some stuff in. Um, me and another coworker brought some other stuff in, and it's like we don't know what's going on. One of my coworkers had to do a girl's hair because she didn't have her hair done. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like these are things we don't know about. Like, and those are like as far as teaching and, and the teachers in the room. Like 
It's adapt and adjust to your children. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Maybe certain teaching styles that might work for six or seven other kids yes. in your right. class. Ding, 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 ding. Isn't going to work for, you know what I'm saying, everybody else. So, That's why we need more of us in those schools, too. Because you know could, could we yeah. can read things about our kids like, oh, man, he's getting picked on or them I shoes going, yeah. them shoes ain't the one. Right. You know what I'm saying? And right. he's really getting picked on. I know how that feels. Nah, you right. too loud. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm baby. Right, you know what? I because I, I used to wear, wear a lot of purple when I was at Caps. So I had these Air Max nineties. They were purple and silver. silver. Yeah, I this is the time to be my favorite. Look, hey, I had to. But, but I if, had to. if nobody's in the room to know that that boy needs that for his confidence, for him to learn. Uh. And just be cool for the rest of the week or the month. He's never gonna forget you. You know what I'm saying? Like that's oh, that's you don't. <laughs> that's that's where we need some of us. So I don't, I don't really I wouldn't think I particularly need an all black staff. I really wouldn't need that all the time. A, a mixture is cool because you need the diversity. Yes, right? exactly. I want her to be able to. I want my daughter once she gets to the age of being school age. I want to I want to know that she can handle herself around this and around that. Mm-hmm. But I still want somebody to be around her that if she messes up her hair after gym. She'll, the the, like, the lady will so, so, you yeah, know, like help her out. You'll say, "We'll put me together." Yeah, and that's Be, necessary. Being up here, man, we get a lot of the barbershop. Yeah, we get a lot of parents that drop their kids off because they trust us. I don't know how many noses I didn't wipe, ears I didn't clean out, heads I didn't wash, mm-hmm. I didn't put lotion on dudes' elbows. Like, bro, put this on your elbows. Hurry up before ARC. <laughs> I recognize like these we are it's seven barbers in here and we all have children. It's father figures in here. Yeah. And we don't we don't even push off like, yo, I'm a dad, so I'm a teach you. But right. it's like no, so I recognize like, yo, my man, your shoes is on the wrong feet. Self care. Yep. You learn you know about self care here in the barbershop. You guys educate us. Like even the simple stuff is like, yo, don't put grease in your hair before you get a haircut. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Those those things we don't know about. Dudes be using sporting waves like it's grease. Yeah. That's not gonna moisturize your scalp. Exactly. This is what you want to do. Don't exactly. Put it, you know what I mean? And so I can only imagine what it's like. This is just the barbershop. I can imagine what it's like in school when yes. I'm really trying mm-hmm. to get this math thing. But I haven't eaten. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I don't. I'm not confident in myself. Yep. So how can I be confident in my performance at school? So that's going to go into what I, what the next question would be is. We all spoke about how the schooling really comes down to us and how we um, are going to be the big proponent of why our us kids get parents. get educated. Yes, mm-hmm. um, as parents. So what are we doing as parents to prepare our children for their day? Like, is there a nightly routine? Is there a morning routine? What are we doing? I'll start with you, Jay, since you have, um, what are we, what are you doing that will get um, Ruby ready for her school day or um, Ben prepare? Like, is there certain words that you got to say? What is As I'm about to say this, I will say, honestly, I got to be more consistent. That's the point of asking Out of, out of yeah. the week, I maybe do it twice, but I make it a point that I got to get up and I got to, like, electrify the kids. Family, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'll cut the music on while they brushing their teeth and uh, just wake them up happily. you seen Coming to America, right? Mm-hmm. Ain't that like the most pleasant way to wake up How and just wake up and you just go about your day? Yep. You can't do no wrong when you get woken up by a symphony. People take care of you, wash you, clothe you, and then you work out a little bit, eat with your family, right. and then you can't do no wrong after that. And so I try to make sure that a, my kids wake up pleasantly. It ain't no, hurry up, you late. You got 10 minutes, get in the shower, brush your teeth, and then I try not to do that. I try not to rush their morning. Right. Like, wake up, take time. Even if you just got to sit on the edge of the bed for a minute. Man, I don't everybody rush them. need that. We need that. Damn. Right. You need kids <laughs> you know on saying? sometimes? I don't <laughs> rush them. Yes. I don't <laughs> rush them to, to start their day. I don't wake <clears throat> them up and then make them late already. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hate waking up and then, damn, I got to. That st- throws everything off. And I think for the most part, that's our routine is that you wake up, as soon as you get up, brush your teeth, put your shoes on, get your clothes, and then let's go. Hurry up. Eat on the way out the door. So I try to make their morning as pleasant as possible. Even if it's a party with the the TV on or the radio on or a conversation, it may be prayer before we leave. You know what I'm saying? I always... I always want to make sure we keep that because that's real in my house. It may be like, wait a minute, before we leave, hold up, hold up, hold up. 
Ben, what you got to do today? Ruby, what you got to do today? Mom, you all right? Are we good? Say a word. Blessings. Let us get home safe. I can't wait to whoop these kids in this bowling alley as soon as they get protect home. Them, <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then send them off. So really, I don't really have a routine, but I try to make the morning as pleasant as possible before they go out into this world. Yeah. Devin, Trek. Um, <laughs> uh, for me, again, I had three and six-year-olds. So, um, and I'm convinced, like, well, they're night owls, so I'm convinced, Man. like, they get all that from my wife. Because I, when I'm tired, I'm tired. <laughs> but, uh, I'm asleep. Yeah, so, like, I got homies that, like, put their kids to bed at, like, 9, 9, 30. I'm like, what are you doing to do that? Because I, I, I can't get it. So, for me, it's just kind of like, all right, that's cool. Y'all want to be up? Whatever. <laughs> but In the morning. No, like, it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. <coughs> um, and they, they respond pretty well. My boys are very energetic, high strung anyway. So, uh, when they're up. Uh, they're actually excited to go to school. So I, I try to capitalize on that at That's dope. all yeah. costs. Like, all right, cool. Y'all want to go to school? Perfect. <laughs> um, you know, like, cool. You can go to school. Yes, yes. Um, so they, I try to make sure they're, they're fed. You know what I'm saying? To me, it's nothing worse, you know what I'm saying, than a kid going to school in the night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, amen. Like, yeah. You're not ready. Yeah, so it's like, eat. Like, eat, eat, eat. Do all that. Um, and then we have our own personal handshake that we do for uh, we dope. step out. That's like, dope. yeah, the funny thing is my youngest doing it. Cause he, <laughs> he, 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 he actually dry. got it. He be, he be trying to come to me to do it. So I was like, I'm about to go. I'm about to go. Bus is here. So, um, but, the, but with us, that's dope. It is, that's pretty tight. And I mean, I, I, I get them ready because I, me, I'm a little more of like the tiny person. Like, mm-hmm. I got to be out the door and stuff like that. Because the way my schedule is, it's, I mean, I'll just run it down. I mean, y'all are fathers, y'all already know, like, we all have, like, our schedules and stuff. Like, I'm up at 6, you know what I'm saying? And then I teach, and then my boys, are, they do a half a day. Mm-hmm. So, between my lunches, I swoop them up, take them to the uh, babysitter, and then I, I'm eating lunch while heading back to yep, right. my spot. Busy. And then I'm off almost about 4 o'clock, and then next thing I know... I got to pick the boys up from the sitter an hour later. And then I got the homework stuff cracking. And then it's like, and I, I make that a little more enjoyable because it's like, you know. You got to. Yeah, so you know and then make, it's that. Yeah. And then my wife, you know what I'm saying, she's a department manager at a call center. So between that and then we're also assisting my mother in love with her um her uh, catering business. I like how you said uh, mother. I love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna do that, baby. Yeah, yeah. I actually <laughs> learned that from my wife. Cause yeah. She said that to my mom and mother my pops. Love. So I was like, that, like yeah. all right, I said, I'll roll with that. <laughs> yeah. Know? But uh, yeah, she she assists with that. So she's actually out the door before me. Mm. And then she's got to do that. And then she gets, she's back at her job taking care of, you know, supervising others. And, uh, and then she's not home to like, Almost sometimes seven thirty, maybe not even eight thirty. So then it's all that, and then let's not forget, like I do the music stuff. Yeah, so you it's gotta like, find time to write a rhyme. Yeah, yeah. So then I, you, I, you know, I, I try to get the boys settled. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'm learning all this cooking shit. Like this, I don't be knowing nothing <laughs> like. So I'm looking up stuff, and I don't want it to be overly non healthy and shit. Yeah, so I'm yeah. trying to make sure. It ain't the typical. Oh, just go to Wendy's or something. Or right. saw get some pizza rolls. Crying like, nah. Like I try to do something like that. So right. then I'm trying to get them settled at least around ten thirty, and then that's when the night out should pop off. But then I'm out the door sometimes, you know, to to handle, you know, basically hit the studio and stuff because it's like I'm not making no excuses for my, you know, making my hobby something that I wanted to really be into, and right, then I'm right. usually not in the crib till like two. And then I'm right, then I'm right back Dude, up. That's why I see why you drink coffee so much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 so, hey. Starbucks. They know him. They walk in. He already got his cup order. They do. They, they already do. know. Yeah. They already know. Like, I'm like, like, literally after yeah. this, I'm out the. We got a show. Right. Right. We got right. rehearsal that. So it's like, for me, like I'm the one that's more strung out, but I make it as, you know what I'm saying, as Pleasant easy as, as possible, possible for yeah. my boys. and. Like I said, it makes them excited to go to school. Cause yeah. like, oh, you know. And see, bro, we talked about that the last episode. And all that you just named, it's cool. But that sounds stressful yeah. on the black man. Mm-hmm. You got to wake up at 6 
Go teach everybody else's kids. Mm-hmm. Go get your kids. Go do this. Drop them off. Pick them up. Drop them off. Pick them up. Write a rhyme. Cook teach dinner. Right. Right. Got got Ali. Stop at Starbucks. Uh, you got to be patient with the new girl. <laughs> it's like, how much do your brain, how many sensors can your brain go off? Yeah, man. Yeah. Only to hey. go to sleep for three, four hours and then do it again in the morning. <laughs> yeah. It's you funny you crazy. say it like that because I would think that too. Like, damn, I'd be stressed the hell out. God, I'm yeah. going through the day with you. Right. Yeah, I'm like, God damn. And we still got to rap. Right. Well, your raps better be good. Right. You better not write no more if it's stupid. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, damn, when do you right. find time to... Like decompress, yeah. You know what I'm saying. And so I just I want to give you that because that's what we talked about on the last show. Make sure you take time to like relax. That's really relax. Because we we definitely kicked it a couple weeks ago. Me and the wife, right? No nothing. Relax. You have to take time because if you don't, like time is gonna take you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yep. And that's that's the type of stuff where we're rethinking everything and we're exactly. like just hearing our lives sometimes and hearing our thought process can allow us to rethink some things because sometimes we yeah. we need them because we're so much into it the sounds routine. normal to you yeah it's oh, right. right. <laughs> like, oh my god like when you came in you was like man I'm living Canal way out in Canal but I had to drive to Westerville yeah, only yeah. to stop at Gahanna you was. You was like three you minutes right. late. You was like, man, I'm sorry, I'm late. Man, you're right on time. You <laughs> right. said I'm at the light right now. Right. Right. Yeah, man. man. And that's and just think about all these things that the parents might go through. Mm-hmm. What are the kids? Wow. How are the kids affected? And then how are we preparing them for their school day? How are we preparing them for life? And how are we preparing them for their education? Like um, the sleep, the food, the the education outside of the education and those are the things that we just got to really try to be the best at like um i just feel like i i that's why i asked the question i'm not there yet but like when you pick your kids up and when you try to figure out what they're learning that's very important yes and i just want to know like what how do y'all see that? How do y'all see the process after school? How do relationship, yeah. relationship? Mm-hmm. I think that's what you getting towards. It's less about the school and more about like the relationship with your child. Because mm-hmm. you can't go in and flip through their book bag and like, oh, you ain't do this, you ain't do that, because that's gonna shut them down. Yeah, right, because yeah. you sound like the teacher, especially if you know your kid. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And because I know my kids, it's less about let's put school over here. Just like I don't want my son asking me how was work today. What? <laughs> you, know what you know how many heads I cut? <laughs> Man. And then I'll go, it makes sense why I'll my wife on that. It makes sense why my wife don't really care when I say, you know, how's work? Works. Yeah, right. Work. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I get 35 it. heads right. and I ate lunch like, standing up. She did the orientations, been talking to people and emailing her. She's like, yeah. I mean, work. I don't I mean. So I don't even bring up work no more. It ain't even, that's yeah, not what you like, want to talk nah, about. You don't want to talk about school. school. You just want to make you know you want to educate. Yeah. Make sure that you always your child's educated. Exactly. That's what they I got do. a teacher already. That's yeah. why I need to do a better job of myself because I I try because Brax is only four, so he's only in preschool, so he's not really there yet. But at the same time, like y'all saying in the morning, man, we up. I'm up at six fifteen, getting him ready. I day out the door about six fifty at the latest. You know what I mean? So there's not a lot of time for me to wake him up and get him ready. Like I'm getting him dressed half sleep. Word. You know what I mean? Like, I literally, I, you know, wipe him down, make sure he smell good. I pick him up, put his clothes on. By the time we get in the bathroom, he just somewhat waking up, brush his teeth in the morning. Like, that's the only time I brush his teeth is in the morning because he's still, like, <laughs> and, and, and he was with Grandma for two weeks. Yeah. We just got him back yesterday. He was with Grandma for two oh, weeks. So, he up. Man, he was asleep. I went to go get him. This fool sleep. It was, like, 3.30. I said, hey, man, what time you been sleep? Oh, he been sleeping about an hour. Mm. I, he didn't wake up until almost 5 o'clock. So now we got to go home. He ain't go to sleep last night till damn 12.30. Yeah, jet lag. Oh, right there. Back wow. up at 6, 15, 6.30. So it's like little stuff like that. We talk about Daryl's like, how do you do certain routines or what do you do? Me, I'm literally trying to get him in the bed. He's in the bed by 9. He may not go to sleep until 10, 10.30. But he's in the bed, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, for in the future, if we have another kid, man, I know one thing. I'll tell all the parents out there, don't put a TV in your kid's room. Worst thing you could do, man. I'm not. Don't don't do it, man. I'm not. Doing I'm it. telling you. No, don't we do it, man. We just had to have Bed a conversation. Sleep. We had a conversation <laughs> about a nightlight. Like, I don't even want a nightlight no, in the room fine. because because Ava, 
is active. She gonna go. But her mind is it. active, and she will just like that. She probably bring her dolls to the nightlight so she can see and play yeah, with them. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, you want her to, yeah, you want her right. to do that? She'd be dark, pitch black. Like, yo, she's still in her toddler bed, even though she's big enough yeah. to to get out. I mean, she's still in her crib. She don't know that she can get out the crib yet, and I don't uh, want her to learn. Okay, because yeah. I know once that happens, it's toddler bed time. Man, Braxton's and Braxton doing that. I was hope. Well, might as well switch. Man, out. my boys, they still come in our room, man. They bring oh. the, they bring the. Uh, the pillows oh, and yeah. the blankets. See, I'm not playing on the floor. I'm not trying to do yeah, that. Like, we ain't play that. Yo, like, when... when <laughs> we ain't play that. That shit be messing me up, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ava's, Ava's bedtime is 8 o'clock every night. So, she goes to bed at 8. She's been doing that since birth. She's only 2. But, like, she that's the routine. Mm-hmm. So, when, when we put her to bed now, she's learned how to say, don't leave. Don't oh, leave me. Oh, man. Wow. This last night she hit me with the "Don't leave me, Daddy." Father, Wait, so she started hitting with the no. water eyes. I'm like, oh, Daddy, please. I'm like, I'm not leaving you. I'm like, I'm Daddy, going leave. to bed too. You know, so like, I'm just going to bed. I'm right. Yeah. When she started like, with the water <laughs> eyes, boy, you gonna be. And if you gonna be doing what I do sleep on the floor. Like, hey man, there's no monster in here, <laughs> right? <laughs> And, and that's that. When we moved, I told her there's no more monsters in the new house. Mm-hmm. So now when she t- talks about monsters, she said. She's like, no more monsters in the new house. I'm like, no, 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 here. We got a monster. The monster in the last house. <laughs> I knew it, Daddy. <laughs> but yeah, like, um, and just I think those routines will, if we think about it, um, to try to find a routine for our kids, nighttime, morning time, so that they can look forward to the day, be well equipped for the day. Because I'm sure you see kids who aren't ready to learn yep. when they get to school yeah. at all. And that's where I think that if we think about before school, mm-hmm. before they get to school, so they can be well in school and then mm-hmm. not have to worry about getting a whooping mm-hmm. after school because they was acting up in school. Right. Um, Prepare and, them early. And, and all this stuff, pre- preparation. Mm-hmm. We need preparation. But there is one thing I want to topic speak of real quick before we close. As a teacher or educator, gotcha. what more can parents do and what can we do as a community to help educators out like are there supplies because I, st- I spoke to to jay i'm like i would love to do i think that sometimes teachers need supply drives mm-hmm. more than just once a year like oh, there needs okay. to be some either quarterly or august and, and january break, you know yeah, like, yeah, that, break, there needs definitely. to be a, a re-up of that mm-hmm. like what are some things that you can think of as an educator that we can do with our kids and with the teachers um i definitely i didn't even think about that that drive stuff so i think that's a definitely good thing um some teachers kind of expect the parents to have all that stuff at times and then it becomes a damper it it's almost like they take it out on the child for not being prepared for yeah. that stuff and it's just kind of like you don't know what the parents like, dealing with like, they might not okay, have it <laughs> like they're not going to be all the way ready for real life but if you have pencils and stuff like just, just give it to the kid like it's fine like yeah don't take it out on the child but right. um i think the biggest thing is just wanting them make, and it, it goes back to the actual, you know, I'm educator. Like, if I'm excited to teach a child, you the child's gonna be excited to come into class. Right. So, whatever at home, like, to make that child excited, hey, you get to go to school today. You know what I'm saying? It's school time. I don't know, because obviously, Motivate. yeah, yeah, obviously that first week of school is like, oh, no, gear yeah. on. You know what I'm saying? The pencils are ready. You know what I'm saying? Even some of the Football teachers bag. get excited, but then it, 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 it goes slow and slowly down. And then it's just kind of like, good gosh. So I, I I don't even think it's so much on the um, parents, per se, to get that child like all the way ready to go to school. Like, I guess I look at it kind of like me as an artist. I'm excited to hit the stage. Because that's the stage. Like the connotation of how we view school yeah. is such a negative, or it's almost like a, a task. Like you have to be there. Right. What am I doing as the as the educator to make that child excited to go to school? So yeah. I would even say that's something that needs to be asked more so to the staff within the school, and that <coughs> goes from teachers to the custodian. To the principal, vice principal, dean of students, the lunch lady, like everybody, got everybody, like what makes that child excited? So, like I said, I'm in special needs. I work; it's three of us in the same room. We have about eight kids in our room. Our 
teachers are jealous of our classroom because it's so like you walk in, it's nothing like what goes on in the outside. Right. Like you walk in, it's almost like wow, like it's very chill. Because a we adapted and adjusted to our children. Granted, it's eight of them, but it doesn't matter. Figure it out. Some of those kids, it's eight maybe times three. You know what I'm saying? I got a kid that's 178 pounds and he's in the fourth grade. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and he wears a pull up. So you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like right then and there, I'm teaching life skills and I'm making sure he can actually count the hundred. You know what I'm saying? In the fourth grade. So, but he loves to come to school. He is not. He's only missed two days of school since the school year started. And his mom and dad, like, we had his IEP meeting one time, and she came in our room and was crying and gave us all hugs. And I'm just like, because he was a knucklehead when he first got there. Like, I I mean, I'll come clean. Like, I want to knock his block off. Because <laughs> he just wasn't, you know, grasping certain things. And he was very aggressive. But as the years went on, he got better and better. And I think she was just saying, I've never, in all his years of going into school, um, since he came to y'all's class, he has not ever wanted to miss school. Damn, that's like, amazing, man. All. And again, I think that's relationship. Mm-hmm. A, you have a relationship with the child. The parents have a relationship with y'all. Yep. I mean, it's all like a healthy relationship. Just like you gave the example of being a performer on stage. You're excited to hit the stage. And the show always goes better when the crowd is excited to see you yep. perform. Mm-hmm. We're excited to see you. You're excited to perform. That is a good show. Right. You know what I'm saying? It That's a good, healthy relationship. It all works together. I think that that was dope. And I think with, with the relationship, duh. But we don't think about it all the time. You never do. And you this just is, send them to school. <clears throat> and when you were speaking, it made me think of something that I remember seeing on Pinterest. Because Pinterest is where I ask a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. Google's where I ask a lot of questions. <laughs> but, like, I need examples of stuff. I look on Pinterest because there's a lot of stuff that these parents are putting together out there. So this is a, a, I'm not going to say all of them, but there's 50 questions to ask your kids after school instead of how's your day. Mm. So I'm going to read some of these just so you can get an idea because this will build that relationship with you and your kid to know exactly what things are needed to pinpoint about what to figure out. Like, what made you smile today? Tell me an example of kindness that you saw or that you showed. Uh, What did you create today? Who did you sit with at lunch? Uh, was anybody in your class gone today? Tell me something you need to know um, that you knew today that you maybe didn't know yesterday. Um, what what made your teacher smile today? Like those type of things are not only, you know, it shows that you care and that you're inquisitive. They're going to actually pay more attention because they know you're going to ask yeah, these questions I the next like day. That, like, I like that. Not just how was work. How, how was school? Work. Well, I, yeah, yeah. And my wife would do it. What uh, what, what Clay do today? Uh, yo, <laughs> what, yeah, exactly. What, what, what kind of boots Reeves had on? That's relationship, <laughs> relationship. building. Do that back to not even just your kids. Do it to your wife. Yeah. Like ask these questions. Like so, what did what did Mike say today? What was Rhonda talking about? Like, with her? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She be always talking about somebody. What's he talking about? That man? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that though. And as as a married man, we utilize that with our wives too. Damn, that Instead works. Of, how was your day? Hey, what uh, what what Ann was talking about today? Yeah, you know, with her nose. Yeah, you know, right. you know she knows it. I know she want to know yeah. if you got flowers again. Yeah. <laughs> I know what I like that. Relationship that. building, relationship yeah. building with everything, and your right. kids will be able to see that. Oh, daddy care about how my school was, and that gives them pride. He knows my friends, right? right. That, that makes them want to excel because they know that you're invested in their day. And that will allow them to be educated more. And you come home and you'll learn what their the gaps are. And then you can educate them more. Like, oh, this is what you, this is what you like? Okay, Shows well, then interest. let me tell you the background of this. Like, did you know that somebody else invented that? Did you know that a black man that looks like you did this? Did hey, I did that today. This boy was sitting down and I was asking him questions. And he was just looking at me like, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> and his dad was like, he don't talk about number Fortnite. I said, oh, you like Fortnite? You ready for season eight? He looked at me like, what? You know that? Oh my God. Come on, man. I'm hip. Relationship. Yeah, about... mm-hmm. Relationship. Hey, make sure you post that, man. I like that. I don't want to post it. I want y'all to know about it. Uh, I want y'all to do it first. Yeah. Do it first. Right. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll send y'all the link. Right. But it's something that I think that we have to think a little bit more about the educational system. That's the whole point of this show. Rethink education. Rethink how you're educated, how your forms of education. And before we get mad at our kids, why? Why are they acting this way? Right. Are they hungry? Like, do they feel frustrated? Do they get laughed at for not getting this? Right. Are they dyslexic? Yeah. Do yeah. they learn things better 
a different way visually. Yeah. Are their shoes fresh? Yes. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Oh, Thomas, man. <laughs> Basics. He saved that boy's life, man. <laughs> God, I bet you he got them shoes and was like, man, man. thank you, man. Man. Every man. Every day. Man. 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 Remember the Martin episode? <laughs> yeah. The Chuck Tyler? Yeah. Yeah. No, Chuck Tyler. This one, Chuck Tyler. Chuck Tyler. Man, Mark hey, gave him his life. Mark gave him boy them 13s. The so. Atlanta episode with the FUBU jersey. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was, yeah. That was yeah. Li- that's real, real, that's real life. life. Oh, that, that was me. Real yeah, life. Real life. That was me. Wow. And you could be a, you could be a teacher at a school and know the dude got the, the bootleg real, fake no. jersey and he about to get roasted hey, and his Chan, day's ruined. Hey, Chan, go, he going to be in school today. He, go, he know. <laughs> Chan know. Like, you got the Asian boy that's fresh. Like, damn. Man, going to find out. Damn, man. But that, I think I think we got it. I think we yeah. got to the bottom. I think we, we gave some valid points. Trek, thank you for thank for you. sitting in and, and giving us some information Definitely. and giving us a perspective from an educator point of view. Right. Because knowing that we know somebody who's an educator, we'll look a little bit more towards them on like what what do I need to do to help out this my, my kids classroom? Can I can I do this? Will it help the educator yeah. if I do this for my for my kid or whatever? So thank you. Oh, yeah, Fellas, man. as always, thank y'all Appreciate for it. the conversation, Another man. Therapeutic episode, y'all. And it just let's let's just rethink everything. Let's yeah. rethink how we treat our kids in the morning. Yeah, my mom used to wake me up and yell. Messed up my whole day. Well, my days to come home and yell. Yeah, Messed up my whole night. Exactly. Like, God, damn, exactly. Man. Exactly. Let's think yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we out of here, y'all. All right, peace. peace.